All right, guys. Uh, quick video looking at the uh, benefits and the pros and cons of mid drives against hub drives. Um, although I haven't actually finished building my mid drive, I've got a lot of pals who've got them, and uh, I don't think I'm going to bother finishing mine to be honest. Um, so this, what you're looking at now, is a hub drive, and the the motor's mounted in the rear here. This is the motor. And uh, the batteries are all contained in this metal box. And then uh, up on the handlebars, which you can't quite see very well because we're up there as you cycle on a list and you throttle and stuff. So this would be a hub drive, and it's a rear hub drive. Some people put them in the front, but it's, it's really not a good idea. You're far better off with them in the back. Uh, benefits are, there's, in terms of drivetrain, there is no drivetrain. Um, the rear wheel is the drivetrain, so... Uh, there's no no worry with, with uh, free wheels and chains and gears and sprockets. The, your biggest concern is making sure that your frame can take the torque that the motors apply. Um, maintenance wise, there's no moving parts, so you don't have to worry about servicing. There's two bearings in the back, um, inside the actual motor housing that are all sealed up, so it's relatively easy to maintain. And everything else is just like a normal push bike. Uh, on the downside, they're very heavy. It's a heavy thing, so the unsprung weight, which is the amount of weight that's not on top of the suspension, so that would be this wheel and this wheel, is very, very high. There's a lot of weight that's not supported with suspension, so off-road handling is compromised seriously. Um, this doesn't go off-road. It's, it's a commuter, it's a city bike. It's for blasting around up the park, things like that. Uh, taking me to town, going to the shops, doing all those kind of things. So I ride it more like a, a city commuter. It's not for taking into the countryside and blasting around on the uh, in the woods and on the hills and stuff. Um, when I have taken it to do that, I, I found out pretty quickly that that amount of weight really does compromise the handling. So uh, if you're looking for an off-road machine, perhaps hub motors aren't the best. Um, certainly for cruising around a city. Uh, for just general transport, they're, they're extremely good. Uh, the maintenance is, is very, very low indeed. And there's very little to worry about. Um, I'll try and get, get the thing a little bit closer and uh, see if we can't get a bit more of an overview on it. So there's your rub motor in the back. There's just a chain tensioner on a single speed. So uh, just so I can pedal along with it and uh, I can ride it without the hub motor though it's not very pleasant because you have to get over all the magnets that are inside the, the hub there. I think there's about 90 magnets, 90 poles. So uh, pedalling it's a bit of a chore. It's a bit like riding an exercise bike. There's a lot of kind of resistance from that back wheel. So that's, that's not so, that's another downside. Should that motor stop working for any reason, riding it as a bike's extremely unpleasant. It's got a normal Brooks leather saddle. So here we've got a throttle. It's just a Magura twist whip throttle. We've got a front brake, as the standard with most bikes. Just a normal mountain bike disc brake. Now the tyres you saw in my last video, front and rear, they're the same. They're a, a motorbike front off a trials bike. In terms of the cycle on a list and working out your performance and stuff, that's your screen. Oh, it would do, wouldn't it? Which is whited out now, but there you go. So we've got eco, normal, and boost setting. You've got a battery percentage in the bottom left corner. Your trip, how many miles you've got left, and that gauge on the right hand side where it says 57T, that's the temperature of the motor or of the controller depending which one's you know getting hottest first and the one on the left there where it says 83 volts 0 watts that's your power meter the little figures that you can see down there that's how many amps you're pulling and then you've got your miles per hour uh, these adepto controllers really are fabulous i can flick through it oh it would it's lit up now so we're not going to see anything no. So, sorry about that, the limits of my camera. On the other side there we've got this on-off button. 
and that's the regen lever so I just pull push that as if it was a back brake and that kicks the regen in um, that's about it really it's fairly simple all the batteries are contained in here and on the other side you might have seen on the other video I've got a little heat sink here that's attached to the controller you can see where the controller is mounted at the top so I've got a controller mounted up here and the battery management boards directly under it and then we've got all the packs are in this area uh, up at the front here is a uh, remote control fob and that does me, me lights on and off uh, that runs these lights, this one here and this one these are supplementary lights just if I want a little bit more so uh, that's a brief overview of a hub motorbike now if you'll bear with me I shall swap them around and show you the uh, mid drive As you can see it's a work in progress so there's no battery box on it still the controller strapped to the uh, back seat <laughs> so first thing you'll notice is there's no motor in the rear wheel just a standard disc brake derailleur and a gear cassette ordinarily there'd be a chain that would extend around here so you keep all your gears the motor situated here at the front and it drives the main crank so a lot of the, the bonuses of these this setup is you get to keep those gears so the efficiency is a lot better if you're looking for distance like you want to go a long way this is this is the setup you want if you want to go off-road this is the setup you want really uh, the unsprung weight in the wheels is just as it would be on a normal mountain bike so the handling off-road is in a different league to a hub motor setup uh, just a traditional brakes front and rear, just like you get on a mountain bike. Twist grip throttle, just as is on the other one. Cycle analyst, which is you can just see it strapped on up, up there. That's the cycle analyst. And the batteries normally would fill this compartment here or any variation thereof. Uh, in weight, they're slightly lighter in weight overall. Um, those hub motors are a heavy thing. Um, there is no regen braking on these setups. Um, because there's no direct drive to the motor so you don't get any regen but you do get the uh, benefit of having the gears which means you can make full use of the power you are using uh, and you can take a little bit of strain out of the motor by you know, having it in first or sliding down through the gears for speed as if you were riding it and I'll take you up close and give you a look at this from a maintenance point of view this is where the big differences come particularly on this kit there's a freewheel here which allows this to move normally and there's a freewheel on the other side which I'll flip it around in a minute and try and show you and then you have a freewheel at the back you've got a standard bicycle chain which limits somewhat how much power you can put through standard bicycle derailleur and the gear change remains the same as it would do on any mountain bike so from a maintenance point of view there's a lot more things to look after a chain here, belt and then another chain you've got your gears and you've got your derailleur so there's a little bit more to, to think about there in terms of power and longevity uh, everything else is just the same this controller ordinarily would be mounted perhaps down here uh, or anywhere you wanted to put it really the closer to the motor you can have it the better keep your uh, cable length short up on top is a green tech cycle analyst you've all seen those they're fairly popular uh, that's the v3 and you can see you just get the brakes front and rear just like a normal mountain bike twist grip throttle and you perhaps have uh, a quick fire lever on there although I've got a grip shift on there at the minute to change gears with but that's perhaps not the best solution um, so yeah, for for distance and for off-road, that's that's your best setup. If you're looking for low maintenance, uh, city cruising, hub motors are, are a good good idea. 
and it'll cost you a lot less in parts and bits and the build's a lot simpler. So I'll, uh, I'll just flip it round, I'll, I'll show you the other side where the motor comes out and turns. Um, I mean there's, there's a lot of people going to disagree, agree, got their own ideas about what is and isn't good about hub motors and mid-drive systems like this one and uh, it's all it's all objective and subjective really because it depends what you're going to do with it depends what you're going to do with it let me just spin it round you can see it's a lot lighter it's a lot lighter than the other bike but there's no batteries on it it's the, the main weight really So you can see there at the bottom, that's the output for the motor, which then goes through this belt and onto there is another three wheel that transfers across and then goes through that chain around the other side and that then drives the back wheel. So as a mid drive, it's, uh, it's reasonably complicated. There's a lot of chains and pulleys and free wheels and things to line up and get right. Mid drive builds tend to be a little bit like that. Um, they're just a little bit more of an engineering project as opposed to a hub drive which is does it fit in the back triangle, can you get it, is there enough room to fit it in and if there is you put it in and you're away so it's a bit of a, just a little bit of an overview there of each different kind and uh, I mean the pluses and the, the negatives, you could make a list forever because as I say it's, it's relevant to what you're going to do with it but uh, for those of you uh, thinking you'd like an e-bike and you don't really know which format you want do plenty of research and decide how much time you want to put into it because uh, doing a, a mid-drive build is a lot more uh, tricky requires a lot more time, a lot more engineering, a lot more thinking about whereas doing a hub motor drive is a little bit simpler you just pop it in that back wheel, in it goes, battery's on jobs, uh, jobs are good and so uh, yeah, so main considerations are a battery longevity, which on a mid-drive will the batteries will take you a lot further because of the gear's ability to be selected and to, to make the most use of your power and save the the motor, so you don't have your motor pulling a lot of power all the time. You can uh, make it easy on it, just like you would if you were riding it. So uh, yeah, that's the uh, that's the mid-drive and the hub-drive comparison, really. Uh, I'll try and do uh, try and do a list or a some kind of, uh, I don't know, kind of a, a bit more of an accurate overview. Try and list the positives and the negatives of each system as I see it. But uh, I doubt whether I'll finish this system. I'll, I'll probably sell this now. And I think I shall stick with my hub drive. Just because I don't really do any off-road riding. and I don't want to be spending a lot of money on chains and bells and whistles. And spending hours and hours engineering this project. Um, the hub motor projects are a lot cheaper to build. Um, the hub motor that you've just seen is running about 3 kilowatt continuous 6 kilowatt peak and this one's about 1500 watts continuous getting up to about 2.5 to 3 peak but at that level you're kind of pushing what you can put through a, a normal bicycle drivetrain you're going to be buying gears and chains and bits and bobs quite regularly so uh, if anybody wants more information on these kind of bikes you can go to Endless Sphere uh, I'll try and put a link in the description and you can check out John Bozzi I'll try and put a link to some of his videos he's done he's done a nice build on a mid drive and he's having some success with that so uh, yeah there you go guys so I hope this uh, sheds a little bit of light onto the different kind of drive formats and helps you make a decision one way or the other alright all the best